Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is uh, God's Last Day's Message to His Children. And uh, this is Book 7 and Question 1 and yeah. uh, uh, Part 1 of Question 1. And uh, you can find uh, the first four books of God's Last Day's Message to His Children uh, on Amazon. Uh, and uh, you can order them, or you can uh, find uh, six books worth of recordings on uh, YouTube under the playlist called God's Last Day's Message to His Children. And uh, so this is the first of uh, book seven, and how it'll happen is uh, Tulu will ask a question uh, for those people who have not tuned in before, um, God will answer the question for 20 minutes and then uh, Tulu will give commentary and then ask the following questions and there'll be back and forth discussion with God answering and Tulu giving commentary until the end of the video. Uh, so uh, suspend your judgment. Trust that uh, God is really speaking and it's my prayer that you get something out of this. Amen. Thank you, Matthew, and welcome, Father. So this is the beginning of book seven. I'm excited already. And the first question is, how do I make peace with God? Uh, no, uh, it, it's uh, the questions underneath. No, the title, the first one is the first question. So, yeah. but, yeah, which is the same thing, Matthew? Oh. Uh. Uh, so, uh, peace with God, uh, can, uh, become about, uh, by several means, uh, people, uh, can, uh, investigate, uh, several ways and participate in several ways, uh, to have a peace with God. Uh, first of all, uh, you can, uh, uh, listen to music, uh, that, uh, encourages you and blesses you and uh, you can come to know uh, different bands and different music uh, that uh, develops like a theme for you. Um, if uh, you're feeling uh, down or upset or distant uh, from God, uh, you could ask another Christian or a friend of yours what are some uh, musical uh, bands that they listen to? What are some worship bands that they listen to? And uh, uh, the music uh, can uh, bring you closer, just like poetry can touch you and just like someone's Facebook post can uh, touch you, uh, music can touch you. Another way uh, to um, get your peace uh, with God mm -hmm. is uh, to read uh, Christian books uh, and uh, you can uh, search on Amazon after the subject you're facing. You, you may uh, be uh, facing uh, a fact that you've been deconstructing. Mm -hmm. You've been running away from the faith. You could... Uh, I read someone's testimony who went through that process and listen to uh, what they're saying now. You could uh, look up uh, Amazon and search for books on the subject you're dealing with. You could have a trauma uh, called sexual abuse or, or a trauma, uh, mental illness or uh, anxiety problems or um, Amazon's uh, a pretty uh, big database and there's a lot of books. Biographies can uh, really uh, bless you. Uh, so uh, you can also uh, uh, read the Word of God, but the Word of God is uh, very uh, big and uh, you, you tend to really have to know uh, where you're going to read uh, to get uh, answers out of the Word of God. Um, if uh, you can hear the Holy Spirit speak, you can ask the Holy Spirit uh, for a scripture reference uh, for you to look up. He, he may say, 
Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6 to 9. And mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, turn there and that will bless you. But only about 10% uh, of the church can actually hear uh, the Holy Spirit speak. And so that may not be an answer for many people, though uh, reading the Bible uh, can be helpful uh, and uh, you can uh, be blessed by reading the, the Bible. Um, you can also uh, pray uh, and what uh, Matthew calls uh, people's normal prayers is one-way prayers, but that can, uh, just like uh, talking to a therapist, you can uh, talk to me or talk to Jesus and express uh, your pain, express your difficulties, express what's going on uh, in your life, and uh, you can express those feelings. One uh, really wonderful way to uh, cope uh, with uh, difficulties uh, is to learn how to uh, have a two-way prayer and, and have uh, conversations with us and... Uh, that's uh, my uh, main imp impetus. That's my main thrust of these messages that uh, people uh, really uh, need. They need a focus on uh, developing their ability to have two-way conversations with us that really solves intimacy. It helps you with obedience. Uh, it helps you with your strength. It helps you with your faith. Um, so uh, two-way uh, prayer can really help. And Matthew's got a book called How to Hear God's Voice. And if you look up Matthew Robert Payne and How to Hear God's Voice, you can find that on Amazon. And that'll uh, really be helpful. Um, Matthew uh, wants to apologize uh, for how many times that book has been mentioned in the seven books. But I make no apology uh, mentioning that book uh, often because uh, if one book uh, needed to be a New York Times bestseller, it really is that book. Uh, there's uh, so many uh, Christians, such a high percentage of Christians who have no ability to talk uh, back and forth uh, to us. And that's essentially uh, the problem with people uh, deconstructing and moving away uh, from us is they've never had a relationship with us. They've never experienced a two-way ex experiential uh, relationship with us. They've, they've got no testimony of how we've walked with them. Otherwise, you couldn't walk away if you've got uh, testimony of seeing uh, me face to face and talking to you face to face makes it hard uh, to walk away it's just like uh moses uh, walking away you couldn't imagine moses walking away because he used to have face to face uh, meetings in the tent of meeting um and so you can't imagine him walking away and uh and uh so uh, many people uh, who haven't uh, encountered us uh, walk away because uh, they haven't got any substance to their faith. So uh, another uh, way that uh, you can uh, develop uh, peace uh, with me uh, is uh, through uh, mixing with and having fellowship with other Christians uh, just because uh, Matthew doesn't attend church and uh, feels no desire to go to church doesn't mean that uh, you won't find something worthwhile in church um, and uh, and uh, mixing with other Christians and fellowshipping with other Christians can be really helpful uh, for you to uh, find uh, peace with God, um, at peace with me. Um, so there's a number of ways, music, the Bible, uh, books, uh, fellowshipping with us, two-way conversation with us, one-way prayers, um, and uh, 
those uh, very um, me various methods that uh, you can employ uh, to uh, draw close to us. Um, so have you got any comment, Tulu? Yes, I've got comment. I'm going to start from the perspective of the research I've been doing of recent, which is listening to a lot of messages from people that are going through the construction, maybe like conversations that they've recorded on YouTube and I've kind of glanced through the books as well. I've not really read it in detail, like I've not gone into the book page by page. Sometimes I've just been scanning through the pages and just, say, just want to really understand why people go through the construction and why they are living. And one of the things that keeps coming is because they feel that, Father, you are silent. That's a guy who wrote a book around that and said, yes, because I feel God has been silent. And I've asked God to speak to me and he's not spoken to me. And if he is the God of heaven and earth, at least he should have spoken to me because I want to hear him speak. And here's, a, here's the thing uh, Matthew can say. Matthew hasn't met one person. Uh, I talk to one person who he hasn't been able to coach to actually hear from me. So mm. it's not uh, because it's impossible for me to speak. It's just because people haven't met the right person to coach them uh, to a, a position of heal, uh, hearing me. And there's plenty uh, of books, How to Hear from God. Uh, if if uh, you type in How to Hear from God, You'll, you'll find plenty of books uh, teaching you how to do that. Thank you, Father. And another point is God's inaction, that God is not active. God is not really uh, having a say in a lot of situations or making peace in the world that so many things are happening. People are suffering and God is doing nothing. But I'm sure, Father, that comes back to free will, isn't it? There is nothing you can do. These are our own choices that we've made, and that is not your fault. So, but he was saying, if I am the God of heaven and earth, and I've got all the power, I will make sure nobody is suffering. I will make sure there is no tsunami. I will make sure, just mention a list of things that he will have done to make sure that every family is provided for, no children goes without hungry. But that is not your fault, Father. So that's another uh, reason. And unfulfilled promises. A lot of them believe that some of the things that's been said in the Bible, like I listened to one person, yes, and the person said there was in the, a place in the Bible where God said, I think it was Jesus that said, all of these things will not happen. Will, I've forgotten. I've just quoted it before we started, Matthew. You know where I said this generation. One generation won't come to pass until all these things have been. Until all of this. Yeah. And then he was like, which generation are we talking about? Is it the generation of when Jesus was here? Or so many generations have passed. So there's a lot of misapplications, misunderstanding of the Bible. And based on all of these reasons, some of them say, which, which God will say, you need to believe in me. You need to be saved. And unless you are saved, you're not going to go to heaven. But that's still religion because that's what we believe. That's what we were taught growing up, that you need to be saved. And without being saved, you can't come to heaven. But I've come to that understanding now that it's not about salvation. But a lot of them are still carrying these messages around these assumptions that it's only true salvation and which God will which God will tell his children that they need to be saved for them to come to heaven. Why can't everybody come to heaven without being saved? But I know that there's a lot of things that you look into now for that you're not just demanding we need to be saved. Even you're not demanding that from us. So I guess a lot of emphasis has been put in there by Christians. Our focus has been based on judgment, on reprimanding people, on challenging them, behaving in a condescending way towards them. So the message of the gospel, which is supposed to be the gospel of love, 
has been misappropriated in people's life and they're not focusing on the love. They're just focusing on the fear. I remember this guy I was listening to yesterday said growing up, he, he was filled with a lot of fear and he was very religious because he just felt unless he adhered to all of these things that is reading from the book of Revelation, is that, that his life is going to come to an end. But I'm just imagining all of those people that have been experiencing different things in their life, maybe they would, they might come to a stage that they want to make a peace with God. Or there might be people out there as well that have been in a lot of addictions and each time that they sin again, they're trying to find their way back to God. And that was why I asked the question that how can people make peace with you, Father? In my own personal life, I wouldn't say that I, do, I, didn't, I did not have any issues with any addiction, but the issue I always had was disobedience, was stubbornness. And every time that I get it wrong, especially when Ben was here and Ben was so upset, I knew that I've got it wrong. Then I go back to Jesus because I feel guilty. And I'm trying to say, okay, so what do I do? Because you said I should be obedient and I've done it again. I've been disobedient again. So how do I make peace with you? And most of the time, I don't really think I have any process that I go through than just correcting myself. A lot of time, maybe I could just go to bed and say, okay, I'm sorry for what I did or something like that. Or go to Jesus and say, I'm sorry. Then go back into the routine of the things I do. I don't need to separate time to say, oh, I need to ask for forgiveness or each time I need to pray regularly because this were the things that they teach you in church, that you need to pray regularly, you need to worship, you need to spend time in scripture. But all of those things are not necessarily brought me closer to you, Father. It's just given me a sense of duty that I've done what the right thing I'm supposed to do. So all of these things might be things I would go through before for me to be able to make peace with God. But based on the understanding that I have now, I would not necessarily even ask for forgiveness because there are a lot of sins I've done that I don't even know that I've sinned, Father. But you know that I've sinned and you've forgiven me already. So my emphasis is not going to be on that, but my emphasis will rather be on making sure I have that two-way relationship, conversation with you. I think that is the key thing that a lot of us are missing in our relationship with you. And when we don't have that two-way conversation, a lot of time we feel guilty when we are not supposed to. Some things that we do because we are human and we start feeling that sense of guilt because that is what we've heard over and over again from the messages that you have to be righteous. You have to be set apart. You have to be holy. And what I understand as holiness now is not what I knew holiness to be before. What I knew holiness to be is to make sure I take all the boxes. And that's why a lot of people that I've, no, I've listened to are walking away from faith because they just feel it's just too much. It's burdensome. They cannot continue to carry this burden all their life, asking themselves, have I done what the Father wants me to do? Am I going to go to hell because I've not done it? Just yesterday, apostles sent a message to me and Matthew, and the message was about a guy that's a pastor that started a channel on YouTube and calling himself Enigma. And the purpose, the main purpose of his messages is just around judgment, is around you, girl, ladies cannot wear trousers, they're not supposed to be using attachment, they're not supposed to be wearing jewelries. If they're doing this, they're going to hellfire. And I to send that message to us. And I was like, this is the message I grew up listening to. And that those messages made me to fear God. It never allowed me to see the, the God of love that I've come to understand now. And I'm not going to expose myself to that message again because it's like all the hard work I've done, all this work of the saints and yourself, Father, over me. The moment I start listening to that again, it's like I'm going back, back to zero. And I was just wondering, that where, did, where is this enigma getting his messages from? Part of what he said was Michael Jackson and uh, Nelson Mandela is in hell and all of these things. And Father, I just wonder, where do people get all of these messages from? And they confuse a lot of your children, especially... They get the, the messages, they get the messages from the father of lies. Father of lies. 
and then people think they're hearing from you and i think that's what is happening a lot of time because when you ask all of those people that have walked away i remember the guy that was interviewing them asking them about all the 50 years that you were serving god was he not speaking to you he said yes i thought i was listening to myself so people you've led a church for 50 years and you don't have a relationship with the father and you can easily walk away because of what the Bible says or because of what somebody else says, because of the pressure somebody else puts on you. And this is the problem, not having that one-way relationship. Because when we, sorry, we're not having that two-way relationship. Because when we have a making peace with you, Father, will be so much easier. Because I'm sure Matthew has got into a stage in his life now that he doesn't need to go through any rituals to make peace. And Matty, do you do you go through any rituals to make peace with the father when you do something that you're not supposed to do? No, I don't even have to make peace. I'm always at peace with him. And I guess that's the problem. That what's it, why do people think they need to make peace? Why do we feel guilty when you love us irrespective? So I think that's the problem, Father, that this lack of relationship. If you don't have a relationship with the father, there is no way you will even know how to make a peace with him. And I've noticed that all of these things I'm listening to is wasting my time because I can't hold on to anything tangible that people are given for the reason why they are leaving you, father. So, father, I wanted to ask that what will even put us in that position that we feel the need to make a peace with you? Well, uh, people can uh, walk away from us uh, and actively participate uh, in a cult or uh, participate in something that's no good. Uh, they could um, they could start work on a Sunday and stop attending church on a Sunday. They could uh, get a job that they have to work on a Sunday. Uh, they could. I get so busy that they don't have time for a prayer life or uh, a time uh, to connect with us. They could uh, start having an affair and uh, and uh, the adultery uh, take them away from us. There's many ways uh, people can start to do something or do something that will take them away from us. And uh, we're constantly... Uh, speaking to people's angels and having their angels uh, speak to them and uh, redirect them and bring them back to us. Thank you, Father. And can making peace with God bring healing at all if you're able to make that genuine peace? Because how will I know whether I've actually made peace with you, Father? Um, there's certain people who are counsellors that uh, can... Uh, bring healing to your life. Uh, uh, just uh, sharing uh, can bring healing. Uh, you, you're pretty aware that uh, doing uh, these uh, interviews uh, and listening to me speak at length have brought uh, a certain sense of healing to your life. Uh, it's brought like a balm to your life. It's like um, you've you've been... Uh, You've been washed with med medical soap. It's like uh, there's uh, all the pain uh, of of religion has uh, dissipated out of your body. Um, you're a whole lot more freer, a whole lot more joyful. Uh, so um, just uh, listening uh, to the anointing, just being under the anointing can uh, bring... Uh, healing uh, to your life and, and bring joy and fulfillment to your life uh, whilst the same thing is true sitting under religious teaching can have you bound and feeling bad oh wow thank you father you are absolutely right father it's like i've come out of egypt come out because I would be, it's just like the children of Israel like when they were coming out of Egypt that you're setting them free. And they are free, even though they were in the wilderness for a long time. But in a way, they were free because they are no longer under the instruction of Pharaoh and all his um, bondages that he put the children of Israel to for a long time. 
And I think that's how I feel now. I feel a sense of peace. I don't even care whether I'm in the wilderness or whether I'm in the promised land. But you just feel that sense of peace because you know that you don't need to do what people or the man-made ideologies or the man-made ways of serving God. I don't need to do that anymore. And you're absolutely right, Father. I have peace that passes all understanding. The people of God have got the story of Moses and the Israelites coming out of slavery, but they fail to realize that they're in slavery and bondage themselves. And uh, any person that says that you need to go to church or you need to read your Bible or you need to pray each day or you need to fast or you need to give money to God, all these uh, religious acts, uh, good sounding things are uh, all all religion and uh, it's helpful to do all these things but not necessary uh, and uh, the the average uh, Christian uh, is so religious and bound up and they're prisoners uh, in their own religion and it's only through uh, the interviews with saints that you did and the interviews with me that uh, you've come to realize uh freedom uh and uh it feels so good uh to be out of uh bondage it feels so free and and uh it's like uh you're a bird that's been let out of a cage and it's flying up in the air although a bird that's let out of a cage often gets taken by a predator so uh the analogy isn't uh really good uh but um it's uh like uh, you've been set free. Yes, Father, I have been set free. And from that, I've been able to understand so many things. And the first thing for me is the peace of mind, not feeling a sense of guilt, not feeling that I have to do this for me to be loved, not trying to serve you, not necessarily because I wanted to serve sometimes, but because I'm serving out of fear, because there's been a lot of, Fear that has been inbuilt within me over the years from if you don't do this, you don't do that. And because I'm still here on the earth, I don't know what happens after life. It's very difficult for me to imagine that what they're saying, whether it is right or not. And they open the Bible and prove it that Jesus says this, 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 unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And all of these things can be so dreadful, so, so. So bad that a lot of people are not even serving you anymore, but they're just following religion. So for me, yes, Father, I am so happy. I cannot tell you how much I am happy within me for being set free. And that has really helped me to trust you more. That has really helped me to surrender more as well. Because I now, I think what was missing for me for a long time is not understanding that I was serving a God of love. The focus was around God of judgment. God that disciplines you, God that tells you what you're supposed to do or not to do. But we never saw you as the, our father. We never saw you as someone that loved all your children equally. Whether they are Christians or not Christians, you love all of us and we mean so much to you. And having these messages has really, really set me free. And that is why I don't care what enigma or any other man of God or woman of God that might be out there might be saying about the God I already know, they cannot change what I've seen. They cannot change what I've experienced. Paul, and Paul, wrote, is... Paul wrote to Timothy that uh, that people will heap up to themselves teachers that teach things that itch, that tickle itching ears. And, and, uh, and when you've got an itch on your body, you like to scratch it. You shouldn't. But when you've got an itch, you like to scratch it. So um, it means that people get teachers that teach things that make them happy, teach things mm -hmm. that make them feel good. So if you're a religious person, you like uh, religious teaching, you like people uh, teaching how how you've got to be holy and set apart and stop sinning and you've got to do all these things, cross all your T's and dot all your I's, um, and uh, you'll heap up for yourself. You'll welcome teachers that teach that. And it's a hard thing to break out of that you're actually loved, that you're accepted, that Jesus did everything on the cross for you. 
Thank you, Father. And I believe if everyone knows this, if this is the message that is being pro propagated in the church about the message of love, I must tell you, Father, that a lot of people will not even walk out of your No one will even say, I'm walking out of Christianity. Because when they're able to see that you don't put any burden on us, the only thing you require of us is to love. And part of love is following God's, Jesus' commandment. And that is so simple. The burden you've laid on us is not as heavy as the burden we have put on ourselves. And it's very difficult to get rid of man-made burden because people will continue to prove to you that you're already, you're already walking away from God. Like if you don't go to church on Sunday, you're already walking away. If you don't pray every day, you're already backslide, backslided. So that's what you hear over time. So how do people get away from this bondage? It's only the Holy Spirit. It's only the grace of God that can take you out of it. Because I've been in these conversations now for over a year now. And it, it, it was a difficult process for me to go to, to come to the, to come to a place where I acknowledge that God really loves me was something that I battled with, I struggled with. Because when you look at things that happen in your life, you can easily say, where was God? But having that understanding now that suffering is part of God loving you, is even a way of God loving you. Because how will you be able to know the heart of the Father when you've not gone through any pain? Yesterday, I was watching one of the conversations uh, at the dinner table. And... Matthew asked a question. It was asking his mom that, Mom, I really feel lonely. What advice have you got for me to be able to battle, combat this loneliness and make it easier for me to live with? I need friends. And your the, your mom's response to you was, you, I'm very sorry, but this is part of the suffering. You're carrying the heart of Jesus and you just need to go through this. Like, it's like someone that is being pressed for that I'm on to come, I've forgotten the illustration. But I was just weeping in that process because I'm like, you are so much loved by God. You're so much loved by, by Jesus. But you need to go through this suffering for you to be who God wants you to be. And when you see that, when you see that suffering is part of God loving you, it's part of him telling you that I want you to be able to have my heart to know how I feel. And that is because I love you. That will help you to see God in a different way. And you will be able to know that he absolutely loves you through the ups and downs. That the God of love does, everything does not need to be rosy to show that you are loved. It's part of life. Walking through that. And God suffers more than we do. Jesus suffers more than we do. I never knew this before. I felt God was in heaven having fun. But knowing that you are suffering with us, you are going through this journey with us, your heart aches for us. Like me and Matty were just discussing the illustration of the 16-year-old that has been molested since she was five years old. And you were saying, even though she could only see her present, you've already seen her future when she's going to use her testimonies to save other people. And we can ask you that who, who, which God does that? Which God takes people through all of those pains so that they can save other people? Which God allows Jasmine to be raped 300 times at least by his father before she turned 18 so that she can save other people? That we might not be able to answer that question. That might be, that might be a mystery that we might never know the answer. But a lot of times we are trying to use our intellectual to try and analyze God, something that is spiritual, something that is very mystical, that you cannot, you cannot use your head to figure that out. So for me, it's coming to that understanding that God, it will always be God. And you cannot know as much as your father. And the only way that you can have a good relation or you can enjoy serving him is just by trusting in him and walking in that journey and just following him, just believing that he's got the best in store for you and he knows how he's going to bring that promises to pass in your life. 
So Father, I want to ask that, how do forgiveness and repentance play a role in making peace with you? Uh, so when uh, people uh, uh, turn away from us uh, because of their sin, uh, some people uh, can really benefit out of uh, asking forgiveness and turning back to us. Um, mm -hmm. Some people uh, sin and have a day or two away from our presence. Some people can sin and only have two minutes away uh, from our presence, depending on what training they have and how they've trained themselves uh, to uh, participate. Uh, but um, uh, when when uh, people ordinarily sin, it creates a burden, creates uh, a sadness, it creates a distance. And uh, by uh, confessing their sins and uh, repenting, uh, they can uh, remove that burden and that distance and uh, return to having our presence uh, manifest in their life. Thank you, Father. And... For instance, in the cases of people that have walked away or that thought they've walked away, but they've not really walked away, if they die today without making peace with you, does it really matter? Uh, I uh, have, have said it before. It's been mentioned before uh, in, in uh, another book. But um, it's like... Uh, it's, it's like someone uh, getting uh, a record cricket score, uh, someone getting 169 runs. Uh, it's the most they've ever got before. Uh, nothing they do from that point on will ever take that score away as their record score. So they could have plenty of uh, games where they get 50 and 60 and 100. Uh, they may never get a record score along but once i've uh, made that record score it can never be taken away from them uh, the same as uh many people who make a confession of faith uh sometimes uh that isn't taken away from them it's very hard to run away from us it, it's easy uh to uh, do things that are disobedient and and uh there's uh 10 parables that uh, mention uh, that uh, people uh, that may be separated, the wheat and the tares, the foolish virgins, people that didn't build on the rock, the person that doesn't forgive someone. So there are certain things you can do to take you away from us, but uh, just choosing to reject us and walk away doesn't necessarily uh, divorce you from our love. Mm, thank you, Father. I know you've said it before, but I wanted you to repeat it again for people when they're reading this book. And I've noticed that a lot of things that you said that sometimes the saints have said it and I've never picked it up. So sometimes maybe I need to listen to the same thing seven or eight times before it registers in my head. But Father, that is what really, really amazes me about you again, Father, that it's possible for somebody to walk away but they've not worked away. You still remember all of the things they've done for you and you are not going to forget that because they've walked away. And like, one thing like, that... like a like a, a, a high cricket score is never forgotten by the person. That's beautiful. And Father, the most interesting thing is that all of these people that are working away, they're so loving. They're so kind. I think they just got fed up with religion. And they don't know how to walk away. And they feel the best way to walk away is just say, I'm walking away of Christianity. I'm saying bye-bye to Jesus. There's so many people uh, that uh, don't attend church anymore, but they hang out with Christians and they start heart, house churches and uh, they fellowship uh, with their brothers and sisters. There's such a high portion of Christians who simply don't attend church but uh, some of those people have the strongest faith and even stronger faith than people who attend church. Hmm. And Father, I wanted to ask, how can I know for sure that I've been forgiven and that I am at peace with you? Uh, 
Well, not everyone carries uh, the presence of God. Uh, Matthew realizes that not everyone lives uh, with the manifestation of the peace of God or the presence of God. Um, he's come to realize that by asking other people and the only time they feel the presence of God is when they worship. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Matthew feels the presence of God all the time. And and so um, that's how he can be sure he's forgiven. Um, but um, you can't really be sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Many people can't really be sure that they're forgiven uh, if they can't have two-way a conversation with us and they can't have a conversation about it. Uh, they possibly might know uh, if if you're traveling with anxiety or or lack of peace or uh, uh, dis disunity or or uh, or a, 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 a state of loss, uh, you may not uh, be at the right place. Uh, but uh, Matthew's Mother used to judge things by the peace. She used to make decisions based on whether she felt peace about it. Uh, so um, if if you're at peace, there's a good chance that you're in a good place with us. Mm, thank you, Father. That's really beautiful. I used to feel more of your presence as well when I watched it. When I worshipped, that's how I could feel it in those moments. But now... I know that God is with me. I know that I feel the peace. That is the only way that I can know that God's presence is with me because I feel the peace within me. And I don't feel the way I do feel before, where I feel guilty for majority of the things. And you maybe I've not prayed enough today. Maybe I've not read the Bible. And you have that sense of guilt in you. that You have to do it. Whereas serving God is not about those chores that you think you're doing because I've read a, a lot of the Bible, but maybe I don't even understand what the Bible verses say, or maybe I've even forgotten about what I read in the morning by the time it is night time. So it's not about doing all of these things, but it's about having the relationship with the Father. And that is what I emphasize on that is more of the relationship rather than the religion. So I hope people that are listening to this are able to understand that it's so easy to make peace with you, Father and that you love us. And sometimes they don't even need to make peace. They just need to figure out how to communicate with you because only through having two-way communications, you are able to hear from the Father and you are able to have those clarifications that you might be having or those confusions that you might be having within you. And all of the books as well that's been written by Matthew as well is really so good to understand who God is to learn from the people to learn from Matthew, rather, who has had a better relationship with the Father and has been able to write all of these books from his own experiences. Because when a post in South Africa sent the message yesterday and he said a lot of people are watching it on YouTube, I said, I don't know why people like to watch something that is not true. That we, Matthew and myself, we've been making a lot of videos around the truth, but people are not interested in that but they're interested in something that will create fear, that will create anxiety in them, and that will even distance them further away from God. So I just hope more people are able to see you, Father, the way you are, that you are a God of love, and you are not a God that eats your children. You absolutely care for every part of our life, every stages of our life. You care for us, and I hope people are blessed with this. So that's my last question, Father. Okay, so if uh, you listen to this video up to this point, it's a shorter video today. I pray that uh, you are blessed and you can like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. God bless.